This is the second part in the Walkman battery charger video series. And today we're going to talk about how I got from having the battery and the board to the finished charger. And this is mostly going to encompass the whole mechanical design. Um, not so much the electrical design, although there will be a few bits of electrical design here and there. And then I'll probably finish it off with a third short video where I'll just demonstrate this um, charger. And also, there's a couple of improvements I'll make to this prototype, but the parts for this haven't come in yet. So this will have to wait for the last video. Okay, so let's start with the beginning. Let's get that out of the way. Let's get that out of the way. Zoom in a little. Okay, so at first I had the battery and the board and I wanted to make some sort of charge cradle for the battery but I also knew I was going to have two of those in the final um, charger. So I started out with this and the idea I had was to have one charge contact on this side and then sort of a sliding brass T that slots in here in these two slots and then slots down here and is connected with a cable down below the slot and then have a spring uh, sort of like this plunger here pushing this forward against the battery. Um, this was a little complicated and too fiddly so I decided to just go with a spring-loaded sort of system. How you have it in in most regular battery context where you just have a, a spring like this and then on the other side you just have a in this case a brass rivet and this is what this will um, in the end involve too but for now this is a plunger standard hex head screw with a wire soldered on it and then a spring and on the other side it has just a nut that holds it in place and this works really well you can um, take your battery and then insert it like this, bang, there you are. You've got your battery and your charging cradle. And the one additional thing with this is there's a slot down here for the thermistor that is going to sit down in here so it has relatively good contact to the battery should something go wrong. I mean, it's not directly thermally coupled well, but if this battery starts heating up, it's definitely going to heat up this first this surface here and therefore the thermistor sticking up a little over the surface and being squished against the battery will also get fairly hot and then terminate the charge well before it's going to set anything on fire. So second evolution of this just has two of these charge cradles uh, next to each other and I tested all the sort of can I get the battery out at any time even if there's a second battery here and this works all great. Um, you can also see I moved away from the slotted design. This still has it because I forgot to delete it, but the second one doesn't have it. Um, this slot here is fairly long though still, which is not ideal. Um, this should be um, a little shorter, so you can't get debris in there or stick a screwdriver through it or any of the sort. Um, for Mr. Holds, you can see the resolution on a 3D printer. I um, went to a far... Uh, higher resolution so it looks uh, a lot nicer than this which is fairly rough um, and this worked fine so the only thing that's really left was to put the two charge LEDs in and then make up a case that accommodates this top part here with the uh, charging cradles for the battery and then also um, will house the board and the connector for power in and also because this is a linear regulator, it dissipates not all that much power, but it definitely needs some airflow below here. So it should also have some sort of vents. Okay, so I went and designed further and I came up in the end with uh, this prototype here, which you can see the slots are a little shorter. You cannot get much debris in there now. It already has the thermistor set in there. It has the same sort of um, copper clad board arrangement here. Although this 
and this will be replaced by board battery contacts like this. The thing is, they haven't arrived yet. I ordered them from China. They will take uh, at least a month to come in. So this is a prototype, and for the final version, I'll actually replace these two. But you can see this still works just the same. You put in your battery, take your battery out. Has the two charge LEDs. This one is here, this one is here, and they are offset from the center because I definitely wanted to um, keep this plunger here from covering them and uh, you therefore uh, from uh, seeing what's actually going on. I set them a little far apart, but you can still easily determine that this is meant to be on that and this is meant to be on that. What it, this doesn't has yet. Um, this needs indicators which way the battery goes in and I'll just design those in as a sort of recess and then you can um, determine this easily. I also designed in vent holes here. These are fairly, fairly, uh, this is fairly heavily slotted so we should no, have no issue with getting heat out. Power is coming in through a USB type B port. I like these a lot because they are really robust and um, the cables are widely available and ubiquitous and there's no uh, chance of confusing them with anything else. And yeah, this is, I could have just as well put a mini USB port on it, but I like these for their robustness. But um, there's nothing keeping you from just putting one there because this is not mounted to the board as of yet. I designed a version of the board where this is um, mounted on the board, but then the board gets a little longer. and So this is just mounted as a standalone. So let's look inside here if I can find my screwdriver here. And this bottom here is held on by a pair of screws here and one here, although one is missing because I've been um, playing around with this a lot. Okay, so let's open this up. You can see that these um, the screws are held on by these brass inserts that are very common in 3D printing. Um, there you can see the hole underbelly with the set-in USB port, the charging arrangement down here, the thermistor and the LED contacts. As you can also see, the board has these attachment points all over it. If I wanted to produce this commercially, I'll definitely go to just a connector where you just have to plug it in and then a wiring harness. But since this is a hobby project and I don't think I'll ever sell this commercially, um, except if there's a uh, hundred people tomorrow who ask me if I can sell this commercially, then I'll probably do that. But as a as a kit, and then it, it wouldn't uh, matter too much because I assume that you can actually uh, solder some wires together if you can build something like this. Um, yeah, and this is actually most what's. Uh, what I wanted to say about this design. The heatsink, as I said in a previous video, will be replaced by one that um, stands up like this. And this is one of the reasons why this is fairly high. The case is relatively thick, so I want this to be I want you to be able to drop this repeatedly. And it'd still be fine. There's the wire mount resistor that we talked about before. You could change this if you want a different charge current. So, yeah. This is, I think, most of what it's about to say about this. I will close this up again and we'll see uh, how it works. Hey, okay, quick demo. I've got the charger set up here. I've got it fed from a just a standard 2 amp power supply. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert the battery this way around, which is the right way around. If you insert it the other way around, just nothing will happen. The charger will detect a fault and tell you that the battery is in the wrong way around. So, as I said, these 
contacts I'll uh, replace by ones that are a little easier to operate, but this works fine for the moment. You can see long short means that it's now in fast and pre fast or top off charging mode. So it's just charging the battery regularly. Um, and once it's done, it will uh, switch over to continuous uh, mode. So the LED will be lit continuously. And we could charge a second battery by slotting one up in here. Um, that would work fine. But what if we actually put in a dead battery like this one here? So we will start charging normally and then it will lose contacts because the contacts aren't all that great. No, um, this battery is dead. You can see that because it immediately goes to either, which we saw just about now, goes either to the no battery detected mode, which means it's just going to switch off the charging LED after a while, or it will detect that something is wrong with the battery because the voltage doesn't rise or, or whatever, and it will go into this short blinking um, fault mode after a while. It um, takes a while to detect that the battery is at fault, um, this because the behavior of this battery isn't really all that uh, predictable, <clears throat> and also because it only um, does these checks every once in a while. As we, as we uh, have seen from the state diagram, so now we are in fault mode. So it switches off the charging for a while, waits, and then it goes into fault mode. This is what we saw before. Um, and we can, could see this from the, from the state diagram, that it only does these checks every once in a while. But it will keep you from putting in a dead battery, setting your house on fire. It will also keep you from inserting the battery the wrong way around. If I put it in this way, nothing will happen because I put in the battery the wrong way around. So this is a this is a fairly comfortable sort of charger. Um, it takes out a lot of the guesswork of charging up these these nickel metal hydrides, um, and it works reasonably well. I've charged up this cell uh, multiple times with it now. So I'd call this project a complete um, and total success. And the only thing I will change about this is, first of all, I'll put indicators on here. There will be a little plus here and a little minus here. And I'll replace these spring contacts by regular ones. Um, all the files to this will be on GitHub or on my, my GitLab. I'm using GitLab now instead of GitHub. But... You can just get the Git repository where it will have all the STLs, all the board files, um, and all that sort of thing. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this project. I'll make another video where I'll show the finished thing with the uh, other battery contacts. And I'll see you on the next one.